Hi, welcome back. Well, I'm digging into these a little bit more before I weld everything in. One of the things I'm finding, in my last video I mentioned these tires and wheels were uh, 27 inch in diameter overall and a 14 inch wheel. Well, it's, it's been a while since I worked on this project. These are actually 15 inch wheels. They're the factory Willys Jeepster wheels. And somebody had put oversized tires on them. These are actually 28 inch overall. I'm thinking I want to drop down to a 24 inch diameter tire. And I want to stick with a 15 inch wheel. Just go wider. So that really helps me out with what my goal was. My goal was to have the right height of this cross member right around five inches. Uh, that was one of the things I found on my Buick when I lowered it and put it on airbags. I put an, a, an average right height of about five inches. It would actually drop down onto the bump stops at around three inches. So I could drop it all the way down in a parking lot. And if I really wanted to literally slam it on the ground, I could take the bump stops out and that would sit on the pavement. But to make it safe so that I'm not throwing sparks and going up into flames, I made it so that I could ride on the bump stops if I had a catastrophic failure in the airbags. And then when I'm driving around town, I could actually raise it up to about seven inches and that would get me to the point where I was clearing all kinds of hurdles, gutters, speed bumps, and the like. So I really learned a lot with the Buick. And this right now is sitting at 7-inch ground clearance on this cross member, which is just way higher than I really wanted. So again, my target was right around 5 inches. With all the math now, <laughs> dropping these down to the 24-inch diameter, that will put me right at five inches, so that's perfect. Both my lower control arms are parallel to the ground. Uh, that's the target. You can have them a little bit up. It's not a good idea to have them too much. Leaning upwards. Uh, it just kind of throws things off on the geometry of these upper control arms. The more the bottoms come up, the more it brings your tires in. So that's what I'm finding now. I set these top hats so that this adjustment was right in the center and I based it off of, since I didn't have the, the drums or the rotors and I didn't have the hubs, I was going off the face of this spindle and I set what I thought was perpendicular to the floor off of those dimensions. Well, now that I actually have everything together, that wasn't correct. So now these top hats are in too far. I need to bring these out just a hair. I mean, these tires are, are just a hair in at the top. I, I want to be able to get them out. I want to have some adjustment there to adjust the suspension. So they're going to have to come off. Luckily, I just spot welded them in. So I need to cut those welds, take these hats off, move them out, give myself more adjustment, and then I can finally burn all this in. So it led me to think that uh, in my last videos, I put the fenders on with the fender wells, and the fender wells were riding right on the corners of these hats. So my thought was, well, I'll just kick out those fender wells. But since I have to cut these off and I have to make some adjustments, I'm going to go ahead and slice this point out that's sticking out on each side that's hitting on those fender wells. And I'll be able to keep my fenders and fender wells completely stock. Clean them all up. Open up the hood. The only thing you'll see is this cross member and the new mounts for the motor mounts. You won't see any of these hats. You won't see any modification to the fender wheels. So 
that's my plan. I'm excited about keeping inside the engine bay sheet metal all stock as much as possible. So I'll make uh, a, a scribe mark on here where I'm going to cut a pie shape out of that, bring it in, weld it up. I've got to move these out. The way these are cut and everything is, is mounted on the frame rails, I can bring them out about an eighth of an inch, maybe three sixteenths of an inch, and still be able to fill weld those pieces and everything should burn out perfectly. So that'll be the wedge that I cut out. And then I can bring that in and weld it back on. Need to trim a little bit more in here. Now I'm bring it around, weld it back together, and then it's just a matter of spacing this so that you can bring it out. So I was able to trim these back and get them parallel to the frames like I was hoping to. Welded that back on, cleaned it up. Uh, I moved the hats out about an eighth of an inch on both sides. So now I have plenty of room to adjust all the caster, camber, all those terminologies that I really don't understand. But I'm pretty confident now. So I wanna get all the fenders, the the nose and everything on and check and make sure that, that it clears just because I want to make sure of everything what I'm getting myself into before I burn all this in. But I'm pretty confident this is ready to burn in. Stick the nose on and see how it looks. So there. And it's setting on the frame. It kind of rocks on the frame. So it'll take some adjustments to, to get the fenders and everything to, to fit before I can actually set the hood on, but it looks good. In doing this front suspension swap, uh, I mentioned in my prior videos, there's not a whole lot of good instruction on how this all goes together. Um, so if you're doing this, you've got to really do a lot of research depending on the chassis and the body and, and, a, and a lot of factors. But for the most part, what I've been doing on this, I'm finding works for most of the hot rods out there. Another thing I was just really struggling with is before I weld everything in, I want to make sure I have all the geometry set up properly for alignment. That also is difficult to find. <laughs> All the instruction on caster, camber, toe for a hot rod. And if I was to take this to an alignment shop, most of the alignment shops would try to set up the suspension caster, camber, toe to the original manufacturer specs. Well, if you're doing something like this to a Mustang, you don't want them to take it back to Mustang specs because that's going to be different. And it depends on how you're planning on using the vehicle too. Now, if this was going to be drag raced, there's caster, camber, and tow that fits drag racing applications. 
And if you're going to do autocross, there's applications for that too. I'm going to try to set this up somewhere in the autocross, just because that's all I can find. So I want the suspension, the geometry of the wheel standing pretty much straight up, maybe a half a degree out at the top. When it comes to the spindle, I want the spindle to be leaning slightly back. Um, that brings the tire slightly out on both sides. So the geometry of the tires are biting into the ground in a turn, both directions. So they have a tendency to lean that way. And what I'm finding is that needs to be adjusted about four to seven degrees off of zero to the back. So with that in mind, I have everything dialed in now. So I'm very comfortable with that now too. I was confused exactly where all that was supposed to be. So definitely you want to do your research. It's not easy to find, but there are some blogs and some aspects that I found on the web um, where I was able to di dial all this in. So. I am to the point now where I can make some body adjustments, make some notes where the engine is going to be, take this all back apart, weld all that in permanently, and then move on to engine trans. It's pretty exciting. Appreciate you leaving me a comment. I love hearing from you. Thanks for watching. Goodbye for now.